Let's take a little twirl around the rink with a morning skate edition of the Inside Edge. Here are your hosts, Bob McElligot and Jody Shelley. Here at Nationwide Arena, where tonight the Blue Jackets will take on the Los Angeles Kings for the first time this year. Bob McElligot and Jody Shelley along with you here on this morning skate edition of the Inside Edge. So these two teams getting together for the first time, the Los Angeles Kings. They played yesterday afternoon in Boston. They came back from being down two goals, Jody, to the Boston Bruins, and then 18 seconds after they tied the game, they gave up what turned out to be the game winner. They're a team that uh, probably will be hungry because of that tonight and due to the fact they're at the end of a long road trip and they head back to California after this. Well, yeah, this is a team that uh, definitely knows how to win, and good teams in this league rarely uh, well, they, they definitely try not to lose two, two in a row, and it rarely happens. But uh, for the Blue Jackets tonight, tall test with this team. Uh, before the loss, actually, the, the Blue Jackets knew what they'd be up against here. Uh, it's a confident group in the L.A. Kings. They're young, they're big, they're fast. Uh, they have a really good identity that everyone plays to, and they have outstanding goaltending. So should be a good matchup here for the Blue Jackets. They're on a bit of a streak here, Bob. On a bit of a streak is right. Six in a row. You talked about the goaltending. Jonathan Quick started yesterday in Boston. It's expected that Martin Jones will make the start here tonight. This is a guy that wasn't even in the picture for the Los Angeles Kings. They might have been in their organization, but to everybody else, he wasn't even in the picture when it came to their goaltending. And all of a sudden, Jonathan Quick gets hurt. Martin Jones comes up from the American Hockey League, and he was great. He was he was outstanding. What did he go, eight or nine games in a row without getting a loss uh, when he came in? All of a sudden, Ben Scrivens became expendable as the backup. They shipped him off to the Edmonton Oilers, and here's Martin Jones with a chance to play. And Martin Jones, I mean, you, you can't take him lightly. He has kind of kind of dipped off since that remarkable start. Uh, but, but any goalie will tell you. Uh, it's not just the goaltending. It's the way this L.A. Kings team plays. They have some great depth players. You know, they have players that, that uh, they know their roles. They know that they can score, but at the same time, they play well in their defensive zone and they protect the net. they got big defensemen. Matt Green is definitely one. You know, they picked up Robin Regeer from, from Calgary. Willie Mitchell is here. He's a player who's been uh, uh, injured for a while. And they have great complementary forwards. Justin Williams comes to mind. He's a guy that's... Uh, just such a good depth guy. I think he's a two-time or maybe a three-time Stanley Cup champ. He won in uh, Carolina also before this, uh, before he won here in in, uh, in L.A. And then you know there's just a, there's just a good mix here, and they can all skate. So the Columbus Blue Jackets have really they're not going to spend too much time working about worrying about the L.A. Kings here tonight. Uh, they're going to worry about more about their team. But if they're going to worry about the Kings, they have to worry about giving them giving them opportunities on turnovers and opportunities on the power play. Blue Jackets have to limit those two things here tonight if they want to have success against the L.A. Kings. I think uh, the way Todd Richards put it the, this morning after his team was done skating was absolutely correct. You're talking about this team. They've won, and that makes them professional in the way they go about their business each and every day, and that's huge. That experience, you can't teach that kind of experience of going through the playoffs and winning a Stanley Cup, and a lot of these guys have done that. So, a loss yesterday is something that a lot of these guys, they shrugged it off 10 minutes after it was over and just started to get ready for today. Yeah, and that's the mindset. It's uh, When you go through something like they went through to, to achieve their goal as a group, uh, you found out a lot about the guys in the room that are with you. You you've know how hard they can go. You know how hard they can work. You respect how much they sacrificed. We don't know what these guys went through, what kind of, what kind of uh, pain they were in, how they were getting patched up to get to get uh, ready for game time and, and, and what they went through mentally and physically, they know as a group. And so, if, yeah, they can take a loss, water off a duck's back. They're showing up here today. You see guys working on little things here at the pregame skate, picking up a pass, supporting each other. You see guys working on tips at one another end. There's little details that they know they, they work on uh, daily, but there's an amount of respect for individually and as a group, with this group, and as a group of champions, um, that, that right, you can't teach it. You have to go through and experience it as they've done. And last thing on the Kings here, you talked about this skate. It's an optional skate, but yet almost every guy is out there taking the skate. So that tells you something right there. Well, and they have some good veterans out there that lead that. And I spoke with Justin Williams earlier. This guy is a journey. I love him. He's a journeyman. He's, he's got a skill set that uh, is, is definitely underrated. Um, and he makes players with him better. He's got this second, third, fourth effort uh, in his game, and, and, and a guy like that taking pregame skate along with Mike Richards uh, and, and, and some of these guys, these younger guys have to follow. Jor- Jordan Nolan is out there. Uh, there's, there's different young guys out there right now skating, and, and that's just it's contagious. So they have a group and a mindset that, hey, they push each other. 
Dustin Brown was out there too. When your captain's on the ice, yeah, most guys point. take most guys take the lead of the captain, and they show up for the morning skate, even if it's optional. Let's talk about the Blue Jackets here. Uh, Feder Tutin comes back tonight, and Dalton Prout did a nice job in the last couple of games. I don't want to take anything away from him whatsoever, but anytime you get a chance to put Feder Tutin back in your lineup you jump him right back in there. Well, yeah, he's a veteran player. He's a part of this organization, uh, a big part for a long time. And he just brings that veteran presence. Great to have him back. I'm sure the guys are excited. And, uh, yeah, like you said, Dalton Pro did a great job. But, uh, you know, have the Blue Jackets played at the top of their game for 60 minutes? No, but they got some wins here recently. I'm not taking anything away from what they're doing. Uh, good teams find way to win, ways to win even on bad nights, and they've done that. But tonight, they're going to have to have an excellent night. The Columbus Blue Jackets need every single player, and the value of Feder Tutin tonight as a veteran is a, is a big thing here tonight for this game against the LA Kings. I want to dip into your uh, former player expertise here, and that is the fact that the cliches are thrown out there every game day. We've got to be ready to go right from the opening face-off, got to have a good start, got to have the legs moving, blah, blah, blah. You can say whatever you want. But the fact of the matter is, you go into Buffalo the other night, and they talk about not taking them lightly, but yet 59 seconds into the game, the Buffalo Sabres are on the board. They have the lead. As you mentioned, the Blue Jackets, they battle back. They find a way to win. They do it in a shootout, so all is well. The streak continues. Now, tonight you've got the Los Angeles Kings. If you were a player going into this game tonight, how jacked up are you to play against the team of this caliber? Well, you're very, you're very sharp. You're very on point. Uh, it's one of those things that... Uh, you, you might go through the day wondering, what is going to happen tonight? How are we going to play? But once you're on the ice and you see your teammates battling for you and, and for each other, the Blue Jackets have an identity, and they, they, will fall, they will fall into it very quick against a team like this. You're jacked up. You get jacked up more for different challenges, and this is a top-of-the-totem-pole type of challenge with the LA Kings, who definitely have swagger. And, um, you know, they're here today in this snowy weather. Just take advantage of them all day long, starting with the pregame skate and work them in tonight in this, uh, you know, mid, mid, uh, Midwestern atmosphere and, and bring them in here and, and put, them, put it to them because, you know what, the next time you, you're going to see them in a month and uh, after that, next time you'll see them maybe is in the Stanley Cup Finals. Oh, that would be all right. Everybody would take that, no question. One more thing I want to talk about is Nathan Horton. Ever since he's returned to the lineup or since he's joined the lineup, not returned, he never played here before, he's joined the lineup. This team has lost just one time. That was against the St. Louis Blues. Ironically, he hasn't done – it's not like he's come out and scored eight goals in that time. He's just been one of the guys. He's just been another component of this team. As he continues to get his uh, game shape back and get his legs underneath him and all of that – how important overall is his return, and how important is it that uh, you know he is getting better? And when this team is going to need some real punch down the stretch, hopefully he's going to be ready for that. Well, yeah, it's it's crucial. This guy, and it's not an excuse. He hasn't had a training camp. He's been off with an injury. He's been working on getting his shoulder better, his legs, and that. Yeah, he's been working on. But every and every single day that he's around the practice, around the games, in the game situations, playing his 14, 15, 16 minutes is another great day for Nathan Horton. I was amazed at his timing the first game in Phoenix. He got that big goal. Uh, he scored another big goal recently here. It's slowly going to come for him, but he's he's going to look back at this every week. He's going to look back and thought, think, gee, I feel way better. Or I, don't, I didn't realize how sharp I wasn't last week because I feel that much better this week. It's, it's just a process, and he's going to go through it. But every day he's around the Blue Jackets he's in, and he's on the ice is a great thing for this team. And I think it's great that nobody's looking to him to be a miracle worker coming out. They're just looking at him as a guy that's been hanging around, and now he's in the lineup, and he's a complimentary piece. And I think that is huge for this team, that they look at him that way because – People are looking in the mirror to get it done. They're not looking at the guy next to him. They're not looking at the guy behind him. They're looking in the mirror to get the job done here, and that's why it's a different guy every night. Yeah, and that's right, and it's, it's an amazing thing for a coach and an organization when you have that kind of balance. We talked about ice time being evenly, evenly distributed. It's a nice it's, – it's a, it's, a, it's a luxury to have, and when you have – Different players stepping up on nights where the team maybe isn't playing great, but getting it done. Sergey has done a great job in net. Bobrovsky has done a great job holding the fort until the team can get together, maybe get a power play goal, maybe get a, a shorthanded goal, maybe get someone else step up and create momentum for this team, and then as a group get it done. So very, very nice thing to have, and they're going to need it tonight. Someone else has to step up tonight and, and, and make sure it gets done here for the Blue Jackets. All right, uh, want to pre-promote, as we do in this business, tomorrow night the Inside Edge Radio Show returns on the flagship station, 97.1 The Fan. And I can tell you that we do have confirmed Ron Tugnut 
former Blue Jackets goaltender, is going to be on with us, former teammate of Jody's, is going to come on with us on that show tomorrow night. And uh, to give you another radio term, we're efforting to even improve the lineup tomorrow night. But that'll be at 7 o'clock on 97.1 The Fan. What are you doing tonight? Tonight I'm doing a pregame show, uh, Fox Live, and then I'm doing postgame show, and I might get invited in the booth with Jeff Rimmer to do a quick intermission hit after the first period. All right, so Jody will be working on Fox Sports Ohio tonight. That pregame show starts at 6.30. At 6.45 on the Blue Jackets Radio Network, Mark Wine will bring you the postgame, or the pregame show, and then uh, George Matthews and I will have the game for you. So that'll do it for the Morning Skate edition of the Inside Edge. For Jody Shelley, I'm Bob McElligan. You've been listening to the Morning Skate edition of the Inside Edge. Come back every game day to get the breakdown from Bob McElligot and Jody Shelley.